Hey everybody, it's Aquila, and this is the Lefty Nerd Podcast, episode 109. It is Monday, nope, it's Tuesday morning, I'm a day behind. Uh, Hayes lost a tooth this morning, I'll insert picture here. She lost one of her top front teeth, which she hasn't lost, um, that's the first one of those she lost. She lost both of her bottom front already. This kid is losing teeth like nobody's business. And then she lost a lateral next to the front two, which she's not supposed to lose for like another year and a half or something, but the dentist said it was fine. Yeah, it's been very loose for a while. Loose teeth freak me out, not gonna lie. So <laughs> let me do the other part of my intro and then we'll talk about that. This is a podcast about knitting and crafting and whatever else, and I record through the week and I post a video on Saturday. So, it could be the same thing I've worked on for weeks, <laughs> or it could be a brand new hat that I've cast on that I finished already. That's just how it works. <sighs> all right, loose, oh, you can find me all the links down below in the description box. There you go, Etsy, Ravelry. I don't have a Facebook group. People have a Facebook group. I don't even get on my own personal Facebook that much anymore. Ah, loose teeth. I still have nightmares about loose teeth. I did not like losing teeth. I did not like ha having wiggly teeth. Mm-mm. No. There's those certain things that stick with you, I think, through your lifetime. I think I'm going to probably be 80 years old, and the other nightmare that I still have is not being able to open my combination lock in school. It is like, it makes my heart race. It gives me anxiety. Do you have anything like that? Do you have a reoccurring nightmare that is just kind of like, it's not, I shouldn't say it's obscure because honestly, I had a terrible time opening combination locks when I was in school. And I think it's just kind of stuck with me. There's like cat hair or something, I don't know. I'd like to know. It's a curious thing. I mean, some it might be private, so maybe you don't wanna share it. So, all right, I have some acquisitions to show you. These were not purchased by me. These were purchased by John when he was out in Salt Lake City. He found a yarn store and he bought me some stuff. So that's exciting. Look how cool this bag is. So the store is called Blazing Needles. I didn't ask him about the store in general or the service. Um, I think he would have told me if it was bad because you know, you talk about things like that. I don't know. First he got me the pin, that's probably not gonna, Blazing Needles, oh that's so cool. And it's an enamel pin, so they use their sticker to close up their bags. This may have been thrown in, I'm not quite sure, I didn't ask him, but uh, also a measuring tape. You can always use those. I find that these tend to stretch eventually. I have one that's like really frayed at the end. That one probably just needs to go away, but I don't want to because that shop's no longer open and it makes me kind of sad. So then he got me, I have never seen, it is a goldfish all-in-one round and removable stitch marker. So I have never seen a clasp like this. It reminds me of a lobster clasp, but it is the fish. Mm. It is not gonna focus now. There we go. Look at that. It's the fish is the, the tail is the clasp. I've never seen that before. I'm just gonna stay out of focus. It's easier. Then he got me these stitch markers. They are a pearl stitch marker set, and they are real freshwater pearls from Oregon. Those are beautiful. I didn't open them yet. That's 
Oh, no, I'm gonna be out of it because I don't, I don't care. Uh, pause. Unpause. Oh, I'm losing them. I'm losing them. They're really cool. That green one, let's just say that green one. Oh yeah, I love that. That's like that chartreuse color. And then of course, not all pearls are perfect, right? That's really cool. They're really cool. And you get, I think you got six of them. Yeah, it looks like six. Oh, that's a lot of stuffing in that container. I'm gonna be taking all that out and throwing it away. Then he got me, cause he, whenever he goes to a shop, he always asks about local dyers first, instead of um, buying just a yarn that you can get, um, like a Madeline Tosh or something like that. He always asks first about a dyer that's local. So this is Polka Dot Sheep Fine Yarns. I believe I've heard this name before. Um, does it say where they're? They are hand dyed in Whitefish, Montana. Whitefish? I am pretty sure Victoria has talked about Whitefish. So if they, they might be local to her. This is really beautiful. This is the Tenderfoot 8020. So it's an 80 superwash merino, 20 nylon, 400 yards for 100 grams. And the color is called Kestrel. Isn't that a, that's a bird, right? That's really pretty. This is really pretty. These probably end up being socks because I think that would be a really pretty color in a pair of socks. Polka dot cheap, there you go. I've never had their yarn before. So John did really good. He picked out some really nice stuff. So that's all I have to show you for now. I've put some work in cat bells. I've actually blocked that sh uh, rug, shrug for Hazel. She picked out a button. I have to sew it on. And that's it. There you go. All right, until the next clip, I hope everyone is well, and I'll see you then. This was hiding in the bag. <laughs> I totally missed it. Uh, I've seen these. I don't, I don't, I think there's many makers who have these now in their shops. Um, I, so I've seen these from other podcast videos, but these are the stitch marker with cat ears, and these ones are called uh, brass kittens let me I'll show you the package and then I will show you so there's the package brass kittens and these are by fireflynotesonline.com and they're in British Columbia and <laughs> how do you even show that they're the cat ears they're so cute and it comes with, I think it said a set of eight. They're so cute. I've seen them before. <laughs> and I almost purchased them before. And I'm glad I didn't because now John got me a set and I love them. They're so cute. Oh, they're a little big for stitch marker. Like, then they're 11.7 millimeter. I don't know if they had other sizes, but this is the size he got me. They're kind of big. I mean, they're not giant, but... So I think that's probably close to like a size 10. I don't know millimeters and US sizes when they get up that high. So I'm assuming it's close to like a size 11, 10 or 11 US needle. It doesn't say. There you go. I, frick, I totally, I knew there was something else and then I didn't see it in the bag right away. So there you go. Hey everybody, it's Aquila from the past and I want to show you guys in color the socks that I cranked for John and for the customer. I think in a week's time, they'll be in the hands of the customer, so I won't feel so bad. If they are not, this clip will not air, or at least the portion where I show those socks, I will cut out of this video. But let me show you John's socks. Ready? And you might even have seen them already if I post them on Instagram because I'm so excited about them. This is Kiss Me I'm Shit Faced on the Sparkle Base. And I love them. The only difference I think I would have made, I would have started this 
So I did my one by one for 20 rows. Sorry, I'm trying not to cover my face because I know some people read lips and I don't have the captions at the bottom. I know you can turn on the auto captions from YouTube. I don't know how, how well they are. So I did the one by one rib. <laughs> And then I did like 10 rows of the main color and I wish I wouldn't have done that. I wish I would have done one row of the main color, then switched and did my stripes. That is why one big thing I wish I, if I could change something, that is what I would change. I am in love with these. I don't know, I can't tell you if John's in love with them because I'm still recording them before, recording this before he gets them, so. Yay. All right, and the other socks, uh, we'll do like a pause just in case I have to cut this out. The other socks, uh, that yarn I talked about in the black and white video from last episode was Andrea, the cat lady, craft all the things. She hand dyes yarn, and this is her plum tuckered. I think that was what it was called, oh goodness, colorway. And I had told you the story about these prior so I'm not gonna repeat but I definitely want to start adding options of cranking full socks for people you tell me if you feel like you need 72 or 64 I the only I can't really do that for the 72s I can't do ribbing my my cylinder and my ribber do not work well for that 64 is divided by 4 and 72. So I could do a 3 by 1 rib. I can't do a 1 by 1 rib. I can do a 3 by 1. So if I start offering these, um, it'll most likely be on my 64 stitch cylinder before anything else because I do like a 1 by 1 rib. Oh, I should really like showcase these again. I'm sorry. Now that we're in color. This was beautiful yarn to work with. It was really, it, it went through my machine really nice. It's nice on my hands. I, you know, I did, don't do much touching of it because I'm, the machine's doing the work. But I do have to close up the toe when I Kitchener it. So, and with this like variegated skein, you can't even tell where I Kitchenered it. My Kitchener is getting mighty fine. I, I'm, I'm boosting my ego a little too much here, y'all. I love these. These these are really beautiful, Andrea. Seriously. Turned out really nice. Alright. So I'll be popping this in as long as the customer has received these. I'm hoping. Ooh, it's one now. I could get to the post office. Oh, I gotta make the Etsy listing first. All right, everybody, today is Saturday, March 27th, and let's round up this video. Okay. I blocked Hazel's shawl. That was the entre shawl. Entre shawl. Yeah. I, by Lisa Kemery. She decided she did not want a button. We chose a button, and it looked really cute. Uh, she just doesn't want it. But it's blocked. So there it is in all its flowy glory, blocked. It was gonna be a green button, it was gonna be super cute, but she don't want it. I have made some progress on my Cat Bell sweater. I will show you guys. I wish it was more progress and I am two rows away from doing the ribbon, ribbon, ribbing on the bottom speak and yeah I will just keep it connected this last ball was definitely a darker skein than the other ones so I really hope that Maggie doesn't hate it I was where the crystal was that's where I was yeah this is the cat bell sweater I'll put the links down below and this is yarn that John dyed. That last bowl, like I said, is definitely darker than the others. It's okay, though. It's still really cool. Now I gotta 
shove that back in the bag. Hopefully, I will have the body done on the next episode and maybe have some sleeves started. Hmm, we'll see. <sighs> Let's see. The other thing I have to show is I started something new, and this is with something that John died also. This is on the worsted weight that we have. This is called Daydream. And our friend Sarah had asked for a pair of fingerless mitts, and I remember seeing Knit for Brains, the podcast Knit for Brains, which I'll post down below. They had made a few pairs of these and I was like, oh, I like those and I like the concept. It is called the Point Edwards Mitts and they're by Fairlight Fibers. I have to look at my notes. I can never remember all the names. I am done one except for the thumb and weaving in the ends, obviously. It called for, this is a free pattern, it called for a one by one twisted rib, which I did on the bottoms and I stayed consistent and I did it on the bottom on the other one, but I did not do it on the top because I didn't want to. So what's cool about these is the ribbing folds down and the thumb will be long too and that'll fold down. So they're like convertible-ish. Um, you can make them longer so they can go even more over the tips of your fingers, but I felt like that was okay. Yeah, so I need to put a thumb in. That's my, that's holding my thumb stitches. I really like how this color is knitting up. It looks really, really, really pretty. This is one of the skeins that John dyed with just one color dye. And yeah, I am on the second one. I am, I just started the ribbing at the top. So you can see there's the twisted rib at the bottom and then regular rib at the top. Yeah, these are really cool. I am thinking about adding some more options to the Etsy shop for cranking. Um, one of the options being a rib at the top. So you would order, in the order, you would have to order two tubes and they would have ribbing on one end. So they would have a finished rib and I think I'm not going to give a bunch of options. It's going to be a 20 row one by one and I can only do that on my 64 because I don't have a ribber for my 72 and you can't, you can only do a, th I can only do a three by one rib on the 72, which I've not even tried. So I wouldn't even offer that yet. So I think I'm going to add that. The other option would also be to have two tubes with the rib. You would pick this, the length of the leg. Say I gave you a couple options, four, five, six, seven, eight inches. And then I would put in a toe heel and then I would crank the rest of the foot and you would have to insert your needles rip back to the toe and then um or cut there and then uh put a toe in I think that's going to be two options I'm going to be adding to the shop <sighs> it's nerve-wracking making a listing I don't, I don't like it but that's all what I have to show you for knitting today the only other thing I want to talk and well and talk about the Etsy shop obviously um Sorry, lost my train of thought. I had conversed with our friend Debbie about like, you've, you've seen like the dryer, the, not the dryer sheet, they're like washing sheets that you put in your wash and it's like a laundry detergent that's like a dry sheet that like dissolves. Have you guys seen that? I haven't tried it. I think she said she's gonna order some and try them and I'm curious, but I responded to her story about that and said I want to try those dissolvable toothpaste tablets and so I bought some there's a ton of brands I wasn't sure what to buy I have a dentist appointment for that night guard um this week so I'm going to talk to my dentist I am curious these don't have fluoride there are brands that have fluoride but the ones I got didn't have fluoride and they're peppermint these are by well dental and welldental.com and these are the chew tabs I didn't get from from what I was reading I didn't get the ones that were like extra whitening because I was reading that that can break down the uh, enamel on your teeth and I was like oh I don't want to do that so I got just a gentle whitening and it's a toothpaste tablet you get 60 
has baking soda in it. Now I know I could just use baking soda. Like I know that's a thing. But these are peppermint. Now the one thing, Debbie, like I sent her this and she was like, oh, be careful with those. Um, there's an ingredient in there that is not good for dogs. It can, it can like kill them, I think. So we don't have dogs, but of course I'm not gonna let my cats. The thing I liked about getting these things is they come in a glass bottle, then you can get refills and you can just refill your glass bottle. Now you could technically just buy the refill packs and use your own glass bottle. So you chew for like 10 chews, five to 10 seconds it says, five, chew it for, and it makes you, you feel like you wanna swallow it. You really do. Um, and then you brush with your wet toothbrush. It foamed up, it did all the things that I like like about a normal toothpaste, and yeah, so I am gonna, I don't know if I'm gonna try other brands, but I think I wanna try to find one that has fluoride, or at least talk to my dentist and find out if I should have fluoride in it, or maybe use these and tube toothpaste, but I hate the fact that like we're flooding landfills with those plastic, like the plastic from, the toothpaste tubes because they're not recyclable so i don't know has anybody else tried these or wanted to try these if you do let me know your opinion if you get a different brand because i am curious it does say it's enamel safe the only thing you can see all that powder at the bottom from i guess in transit they kind of like you don't want to like shake them because they're gonna like break up so i don't know all right that's all i have to show you for this week I hope everybody's well. Please take care of yourselves. Check in on your loved ones and knit happy. See ya. Bye.